September 2017, the world witnessed the strongest hurricane in the Atlantic, Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma left a trail of death and destruction throughout the Caribbean. Two weeks later, another hurricane, a Category 5, Hurricane Maria. Hurricane Maria hampered any sort of recovery after Irma and caused even further death and destruction. I look at the agony on the faces of the people who had lost everything during those storms, and I ask, are we ready for change, climate change? I am Rahana, a wetlands ecologist from Trinidad and Tobago, and I want to tell you a little bit about my experience. My parents were poor, but they were good providers, so we never had to do without food, shelter, and the opportunity to go to school. I grew up really sheltered in my little world that I never realized how other people were struggling to make ends meet on a daily basis. My dad was a vendor at the central market and a taxi driver. And when I wanted to go to university, he funded me. After graduating, I was fortunate to get a job at the Institute of Marine Affairs, a government-funded research institution here in Trinidad. I remember the first time I went into the mangrove swamp to do research, and I saw the traps for the crabs, and I started to release the crab, thinking that I was doing something good. I was saving their lives. And I discovered that the crab that we buy for curry crab and dumpling, they came from the mangroves and not the market. <laughs> One day, our boat captain saw me releasing these crabs from the traps, and he asked me, he said, Rahana, when you release these crabs, what is the crab catcher going to do and sell so that he could provide to his family the same kind of opportunity that your father provided to you? That was an eye-opener for me. That really was a change in point in my life. Because for the first time, I was able to see the connection between our environment and the services that it provided to us, which included livelihood opportunity for many. The fishers, the crab catchers, the oyster men and women, they harvest their products from the mangroves mangroves, and they bring it to the market in order to make a living. Now, I have been doing research on the marine environment for the far past 20 years, and I've not only learned about ecosystems and science, I've learned a lot about people. Now, I have a passion for mangrove research that people don't understand. So much so that they refer to me as the mangrove woman. So, mangrove trees, they grow along our coastline in salty waters. They form complex habitats, but they provide us with numerous services. These include providing habitat for a variety of species, including commercially important shrimp and shellfish, but shellfish and fish. They are nurseries for juveniles. They help filter our water. They help absorb carbon dioxide. But most importantly, Mangroves break up storms by dissipating wind and wave energy, and they protect against coastal erosion. Now, I have been to every mangrove swamp in Trinidad and Tobago, and I have seen how these wetlands have been degraded over time. More importantly, I have seen the poorest people living in and depending on these mangroves for their livelihoods. These are the crab catchers, the fishers, the oyster men and women that live along our coast, clearing mangrove trees so they can build shacks. They have no amenities, electricity, running water. They are the landless, and many times when the tide is high, their homes are flooded because of where they live. In their daily struggle to survive, I wonder if they even consider how vulnerable they are to change, climate change. Irma, Jose, Maria, whether we believe it or not, 
our climatic conditions are changing. Climate change is not something way off in the future. We are seeing the impacts today. For instance, we are having more intense rainfall. The amount of rain that falls 10 minutes today was equivalent to rain that would have fell over an hour 15 years ago. And with these intense rainfall, we have more flooding and landslides. Some communities are flooded on a daily basis, especially in the wet season. Our coastlines are eroding, and this is going to accelerate with sea level rise and storm surges. 70% of our population live on the coast, and people have already started to lose their land to the sea and are very scared for the safety of their house and their families. What are they to do if they cannot afford expensive coastal protection structures? We are also seeing more frequent and intense hurricanes, and the hurricane path is moving further south, making us even more vulnerable. According to an Inter-American Development Bank study, between 2005 and 2015, the number of climate-related natural disasters that occurred in Trinidad and Tobago increased by five-fold. We had five times more disaster in 10 years. Now, our mangrove forest is our first line of defense against the impacts of climate change, sea level rise, and storm surge. But more importantly, they break up the storms by dissipating wind and wave energy. But in Trinidad and Tobago, we have already lost more than 50% of our mangroves. We have converted them to homes, industry, highway, to extend the city. When we lose this ecosystem, we lose the services they provide to us, such as coastal protection. I wonder if we even realize how important the little bit of mangrove we have remaining are to our survival on this island. I think, as scientists, we have failed to effectively communicate the value of our environment to the people, especially the fact that we need to conserve it so that it can continue to protect us against the impacts of climate change and provide us with livelihood opportunities. Climate change is our new reality, and we cannot stop the changes. And although we cannot say with certainty when and how intense they are going to be, we have to adapt and become resilient. Resilient is our ability to recover after a natural disaster or extreme event. To build resilience, we must first understand our problem. Once we understand our vulnerability, then we can act, look at innovative solutions, or even at best practices that other societies around the world are putting in place to help lessen the impact of climate change. We must change our behavior and stop being so complacent. As Zaid Hassan, best-selling author, said, the big problem is that we think that we can solve complex problems by changing everything but ourselves. We need to change ourselves because we have a responsibility to protect our families, especially in these uncertain times. We need to arm ourselves with knowledge so that we can make informed decisions about where and how we live, not on riverbanks, on the sandy shore, where we expose our loved ones to the elements. If we live in land, that is prone to flooding, then we need to build on stilts, and we need to stop blocking our water courses and our river mouths. For people who already live in low-lying area, when you hear a hurricane warning, 
Don't plan a party. Move your family to safer grounds by relatives or in a shelter. Listen to what the authorities are saying during these periods. It can save life. More importantly, we need to stop the degradation of our natural environment like our mangroves. We need to stop clearing them and putting our pollution in it. When we litter and our rivers and our beaches, the litter ends up in our mangroves and it causes degradation. Healthy mangroves help reduce risk against natural disasters. We need to come together, civil society, the government, private sector, to help protect our mangrove and, when necessary, rehabilitate them. All around the world, people have understood the value of the mangrove, especially with regards to protecting the shoreline and pro providing protection for their property. And there are many initiatives to do replanting projects. They even call it a fancy name. It's now green infrastructure. We need to put in some green infrastructure. We also need to help the most vulnerable in our society. Those are our fishers, our oyster vendors, our crop harvesters. We need to teach them new ways to harvest their produce without destroying the mangrove. We need to teach them new skills or new techniques, for instance, mariculture, where they can grow them in ponds. That way, they can continue to ply their trade without causing food destruction. In some areas, as I mentioned, we need to teach them very new skills, to be tour operators, entrepreneurs, farmers, and even new things, like how to produce honey in the mangrove. I've seen that being done in Guyana, and it's a really good honey, by the way. We need to teach them how to be more resilient. Now, the accelerated changes in our climate that we are experiencing is all human-induced, and we all have contributed in one way or the other. And although we may feel hopeless, because even if we reduce our carbon emissions today, the, the concentration, concentrations that are already in our atmosphere are going to cause impact, we need to still think of our future. If we continue with a business-as-usual attitude and don't try to curb our pollution and our degradation, our future would even be more catastrophic. More ice caps are going to melt, sea levels are going to rise higher, and islands like ours could become fully submerged. Is that the future we want to leave for our children, grandchildren, and generations to come? I certainly don't want to be a climate change refugee. If we want to continue our way of life, living on the islands, we need to act now. We need to take action to help stop the degradation of our environment. We need to protect our mangroves so that they can continue to protect us from the impacts of climate change and provide livelihood opportunities for the very poor and vulnerable. We need to prepare for change, climate change, because when it becomes urgent, it will be already too late. Thank you.